Today is Easter Sunday of the Lord's Resurrection. We include in our prayers the peace for the people of Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Palestine, and other parts of the world, all the benefactors of our community, and all who ask for our prayers. All those who celebrate their birthday today, especially Dr. Norman Maghuyo, Ernesto de Maculangan, Baltazar Kerobines, Benjamin Cadiz, and Brother Kim Frial OHF. For all the sick, especially Bishop Teodoro Bacani, Dom Clement Maria Roque OSB, Father Paul de Vera OSB, Abot Eduardo Africa OSB, SJ and Lily Ebengoza, and Romualdo Palomino III, Nestor Camacho, Emma Reposar, Grace Herzon, Lisa de los Santos, Normandy Araneta Sankap, Josefina Austria, and Beatrix Acosta de Garza. For all the dead, especially Bernadette Lagazon, Haley Alvarado, Owen Francia, Cipriano Nolasco, Alicia Oliva, Jaime and Juliet Sabordo, Francisco and Concordia Vergara, Rudyard Francis So, 
Benigno Senior and Herminia Ramos, Carmi Ocampo, Evaristo and Pilar Vasquez, Fernando Banay, Ray Abuela, Elena and Ina Formanes, Rodolfo Colantes, Edgar Ailon, Betty Tiu Yap, Francisco Uy, Jerry Uy, Ang Go, Catalino, Catalina Tiunay, Ang, Aquilino Torres, and all the souls in purgatory. Let us practice our responsorial psalm, page 92. Entrance hymn is on page 104. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, 
be with you all and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We pray. this day through your only begotten son 
have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Page 92.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The Word of the Lord. Page 94. Please stand.
On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. <clears throat> he bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head. Not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to People in today's generation are too mindful of facts and realities. This explains why we take pictures, write historical accounts, and put down their experiences in writing, to name a few. We want to be sure that what we witness indeed occur. Factual proofs are necessary in believing. We need evidence in order to believe in something. We cannot believe in things that don't make sense. When you are doubting something, people would say, I-Google mo lang yan, andon lahat ng sagot. This is one way to validate the news. There is Google when we have questions, and 99% of the time, we will obtain answers. The time of the apostles was no different. For them, to believe also meant to see. During Jesus' years of ministry, they believed his words because they witnessed his great miracles. They believed that he could heal because they saw him touch and heal people. They believed that they could forgive, that he could forgive because they saw Jesus do it. The apostles themselves felt that forgiveness from him. Belief was easy for them, for Jesus spoke and showed to them what he was accomplishing. But when Jesus died, the same apostles who witnessed God's marvels doubted what they believed in. Out of fears, out of fear for their lives, they hid themselves behind locked doors and feared for their lives. They experienced fear and doubt. When Christ was crucified, they fled because of fear. And when he died, they all doubted. During our Holy Week celebrations, we all felt what the apostles did. When we celebrated the Good Friday liturgy, we felt helpless and hopeless. The altar was bare when Christ was crucified. We do not even have access to the table of the sacrament. In our everyday lives, 
we experience low moments despite all the little miracles that God does for us, we still doubt and fear. We feel that he is not here with us in the midst of the challenges that we face. Easter reminds us that Jesus rose from the dead, and this is a fact. People encountered it, and his resurrection resonates in the history. Although helpless and hopeless, they, like us, they receive consolation in his rising from the dead. Though we have doubts, we continue our journey amidst the challenges and uncertainties of life. Easter is not just an event in history that happened and passed away. Easter is our reality as Christians. It is our event in and with Christ. Despite all the sufferings and trials, we rise with him. Easter also reminds us that Jesus fulfills his words. Everything that he said is and will happen. When he said, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Receive and believe that peace. Also, as Jesus assures us in Matthew, do not be afraid. You are, of more, you are of more value than many sparrows. Believe it. Truth has spoken and truth cannot lie. Fear and doubt will always accompany us in our faith journey. This will always challenge our faith in the resurrection. But there is something that fear and doubt cannot change. Jesus rose from the dead. We may still fear and doubt, but Jesus resurrected. May we live by that certainty. Amen. Page 96, please stand. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may rise with Him to a new life. Now that we have completed our mental observance, let us renew the promise we have made in baptism when we rejected Satan and his words and promise to serve God faithfully in His holy Catholic Church. And so, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Um... Do you reject the number of people and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin, and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. God, the all-powerful Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and forgiven all our sins. 
May He also keep us faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Page 98. My dear brothers and sisters, Christ is the Lord of life, raised up by the Father. 
In turn, He will raise us up by His power. Let us address our petitions to the Heavenly Father as we pray. Risen Lord, hear us. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. May the Church courageously proclaim your Son's victory to a world living in sin through bearing weapons of love that we might live and remain in peace. We pray. Risen, Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. May the ecclesiastical and government leaders die to their personal interests so that like the Good Shepherd, they may faithfully serve your people through listening and journeying with them. We pray. Risen Lord, Lord, hear us. May all the baptized believers die to their sins, be new hope and life for those who are struggling and in pain today. We pray. Risen Lord, hear us. May all of us who are gathered here today promote the dignity of life and peace in a world ever in agony, we pray. Risen Lord, hear us. May the faithful departed share in Christ's glorious resurrection, we pray. Risen Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Risen Lord, hear us. Father, accept our humble pleas as we celebrate today the glorious triumph of your Son over sin and death. May we be won over by the peace of Christ, your Son and our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Page 105. <laughs> Jesus' name, Alleluia. 
Isten. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jewful so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, Austin, our Abbot, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, our Holy Father, Saint Benedict, Saint Bede, Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, Saint Pedro Calungsod, the Blessed Martyrs, Santiago, Domingo, and Eugenio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Sa pamamagitan ni Cristo, kasama niya at sa Kanya, ang lahat ng parangal at papuri ay sa iyo, Diyos Ama, makapangyarihan kasama ng Espiritu Santo magpasawalang hanggan. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, 
she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. In behalf of the Right Reverend Austin Cadiz OSB, the Abbot of this Abbey, and our community, we would like to greet all of you. Happy Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the price of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feats that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Hallelujah, Hallelujah. 